Hello, welcome to the final part of our four part theory on this new theory of gravitational red shift. Let's talk about light emitters. Examples of light emitters are lasers, LED, flashlights, fire. Light emission is caused by electrons bouncing around inside. Moving electrons create electromagnetic waves. These waves travel at the speed of light. These waves hit other electrons, causing electrons to move, which causes more waves. This interaction repeats, causing cyclical electron movement. The cyclical movement emits electromagnetic waves at a general frequency. If the speed of light is lower, the frequency of the emitted electromagnetic wave is proportionally lower. Therefore, lower light speed means lower frequency of emission. Let's have a more concrete example. We have two mirrors here with a light beam pulse bouncing between the two mirrors. The speed of light, local speed of light, is CL. The distance between the mirrors is D over 2. The total distance the pulse travels as it travels from one mirror to the other and back is D. The time it takes for a travel from one mirror and back is the period T, D over CL. The frequency is 1 over T and is equal to CL over D. Therefore, if we see from this equation, the frequency is proportional to the local speed of light. If you move this oscillator here to an area with a lower speed of light, the frequency will lower. Previous equations from previous lectures. We have acceleration due to gravity is governed by this equation, which is the local speed of light and is varying. Because we know what the equation for gravity is, we were able to derive this equation where this is the free space speed of light G is the gravitational constant, M is the mass, Ri is the distance from the center of the mass, and Cl is the local speed of light. Because Cl, we'll assume that Cl is going to be very, very close to the speed of light on Earth, and that is, we're going to leave that as C, that's what we measure on Earth. And we can come up with an equation, this is a difference in the speed of light from the free space speed of light, is equal to gmc over the rate distance from the center of the large mass of object. Um, another assumption here is that the mass where we are going to be detecting the laser after it's traveled across space is much smaller than the mass of the large mass of object. That allows us to make this relatively accurate approximation. In fact, free space light is only about three meters per second faster than the speed of light on Earth. So here we have it. We know the frequency is proportional to the speed of light. So Fi, initial frequency, we measure our laser, hyperlaser cannon frequency, it's going to be proportional to the speed of light on Earth, which is C. Well, the frequency that will be um, generated at the large massive object will now be lower, C minus delta C, okay? And as the laser beam travels across space, it doesn't lower, it's already lower because it's here and it stays at the same frequency as it travels across space. So let's find out what the final equation is. FRS over FI equals C minus delta C over C. You get 1 minus delta C over C. Delta C is GM over CRI. Plug that in the equation. And here we have it, the gravitational redshift equation. It's identical. Though the equations are identical, the theories that led to them are not identical. Two different ways of thinking. The established theory and the new Winslow theory, I'm going to give it a name, Winslow theory, equation are the same. Here's the differences. Established theory has photons. The new Winslow theory does not, just electromagnetic waves. Light has mass. The established theory says yes. The new Winslow theory 
even if it does have mass, it doesn't take part in the derivation of the equation. The established theory, speed of light is constant. New Winslow theory it is varying. The physics type is quantum versus classical. The New Winslow theory is more based on classical physics than the established theory. The established theory also relies on probability. It says that photons are appearing and reappearing and moving in random patterns and actually have some kind of intelligence that decides where they're going to go. The new Winslow theory, again, just relying on established physics. I think this is this theory, and hopefully you agree with me, is worth some consideration. Thank you very much. It's my honor that you actually took a listen to this. Thank you very much.